بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ایم عائشہ فرام ڈپارٹمنٹ بی ایس کیمسٹری اینڈ ٹوڈے آئی ول ڈسکس اباؤٹ ہاؤ جینیٹکلی ماڈیفائڈ پلانٹس از ہیلپ فل ان ریڈیوسنگ سی او ٹو فرام آور انوائرمنٹ وی آر نو سی او ٹو از ہارم فل فار آور انوائرمنٹ ایکچولی اٹس انکریزنگ کنسنٹریشن از ہارم فل فار فار آور انوائرمنٹ انکریزنگ اٹس کنسٹریشن از انکریزنگ ڈیو ٹو انکریزنگ ویکلس اینڈ انکریزنگ کمبیوشن آف فاسل فیولس ایٹسیٹرا اینڈ دس از کازنگ پولیوشن ان آور انوائرمنٹ اینڈ دیٹ از مچ ہارم فل فار آور انوائرمنٹ سو فسٹ آف آل آئی ول ڈسکس واٹ آر دا میجر آؤٹ لائنس وی ول ڈسکس ان دس پریزنٹیشن فسٹ آف آل وی سی دا وٹ از دا رول آف جینیٹکلی ماڈیفائڈ پلانٹس ان کاربن سیکویسٹریشن دین انکریزنگ کاربن سنگ کیپیسٹی تھرو جینیٹک ماڈیفیکیشن اینڈ دین دا امپیکٹ آف جینیٹکلی ماڈیفائڈ کراپس آن کاربن فوڈ پرنٹس پوٹینشیل آف جینیٹکلی ماڈیفائڈ ٹریز جینیٹکلی ماڈیفائڈ ٹریز فار کاربن ڈائی آکسائڈ ریڈکشن اینڈ ہاؤ کین وی یوز دیز پلانٹس ٹو انہانس کاربن سیکویسٹریشن ان ایگریکلچرل اینڈ دین فیوچر آف کاربن کیپچر دین وی سی کاربن جینیٹکلی ماڈیفائڈ کراپس ان کاربن ڈائی آکسائڈ ریموول بائی ڈفرینٹ پروسیسز دین ان ایگریکلچر اینڈ ایٹ لاسٹ وی سی دا فیوچر آف کاربن کیپچر اینڈ اسٹوریج بائی دا رول آف کاربن جینیٹکلی ماڈیفائڈ پلانٹس سو فسٹ آف آل وی سی وٹ آر جینیٹکلی ماڈیفائڈ پلانٹس جینیٹکلی ماڈیفائڈ پلانٹس آر دا پلانٹس ڈیٹ ہیو بین انجینئر ٹو پوزیس سرٹن ٹریٹس ڈیٹ آر ڈیزائر Uh, we actually modified these plants by artificial ways so that we can uh, use the, uh, these plants for what purpose we can use uh, the these traits may include increased resistance to pest and disease and it also improved nutritional value of plants and increased yields they are created through the use of biotechnology uh, i already discussed about we can create it through the use of biotechnology and uh, certain a uh, process Uh, by which we can create our genetically modified plants which involves the manipulation of genes from one organisms to another genetically modified plants have been used for decades and are now, and are now a major part of modern agriculture uh, so the next and the main thing is how genetically modified plants are created Uh, genetically modified plants are created by taking genes from one organisms we actually take a gene from one organisms and then we put this gene on the uh, other organisms we the 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 dead plant we use to modify so such as the bacteria for example we can take a bacteria and inert inserting them into the dna of the plant this is done using a process called a component dna technology The foreign gene is inserted into the plant genome, which is the complete set of genetic material found in the organism. The process is generally done in laboratory, as it requires sophisticated technology and a sterile environment. The uh, obviously a sterile and uh, sophisticated technology is necessary. So. Uh, we generally done it is in laboratory the foreign gene is then expressed or activated in the plant cell and the desired trait is expressed uh, we take an example for example the inserted gene may code for resistance to a certain insect resulting in the plant being able to fend off the insect better than the other plants uh, we see how genetically modified plants are created and next we see by step wise how basically the uh, behind process in inserting the gene first of all we isolate the gene of interest from the organism such as bacteria or fungi or whatever that will be inserted in the plants insert the gene into the bacteria plasmid which is small circular piece of dna then introduce that plasmid into plant cell by bacteria or a gene gun then the gene is inserted into the plant genome which is the complete set of genetic information found in the organism the foreign gene is then expressed in that uh, plant uh, in that plant which we inserted the gene uh, the gene is activated in that plant cell and the desired trait is expressed select the select and propagate the plant containing the desired trait and then test the plant to ensure that the desired trait is expressed and finally we introduce that gm plants into the environment for what purpose we use it Uh, so what is the next question why do we need genetically modified plants this is important question that why we are creating genetically modified plants 
so the answer is this genetically modified plants can have a number of benefits uh, such as increasing yields nutrition improvement flavor improvement and the texture improvement and then it enhances resistance to pest disease and environmental stressors and it also reducing reduction and also reduction production costs uh, additionally genetically modified plants can be used to produce pharmaceutical and other products such as biofuels by using these plants we can help meet the world growing demand for food we uh, we all know that food is reducing and uh, by the end of 2050 uh, many part much part of the world is facing food difficulties so it is also very helpful uh, in uh, growing food demand for food while preserving nature resources and protecting the environment is also done by using genetically modified plants <clears throat> next uh, we uh, next use of uh, genetically modified plants is which challenges challenges facing agriculture agriculture uh, is facing a number of challenges including pesticides and environmental stresses due to these stresses and due to, due to these pest diseases our crops are destroyed in a large uh, in a vast amount though these challenges can reduce the yield of crops and lead to lower quality products pests such as insects weeds and pathogens can damage crops and reduce yields disease can weaken plants and reduce their ability to produce fruits or vegetable finally environmental stresses such as drought flooding and extreme temperature can prevent plants from growing or maturing properly through genetic modification plants can be engineered to be more resistant to these challenges so this can help increase yields and produces high quality products next we see how gm plants address these challenges we uh, in in previous uh, paragraph we see the challenges we are facing in agriculture and the next we see how G genetically modified plants is a helpful in addressing these challenges so genetically modified plants can be engineered to be more resistant to pest disease and environmental stresses and then this can be done by introducing introducing genes from other organisms we already already discuss about it in detail for example a gene from a bacteria can be inserted into a plant to make it resistant to certain diseases additionally gene from other plants can be inserted to make them more tolerant of extreme temperature or drought by creating plants that are more resistant to these challenges we can help increase yields and produces higher quality products how do genetically modified plants reduce co2 uh, and next we see how genetically modified plants is helpful in reducing co2 genetically modified plants can reduce co2 by increasing their photosynthesis efficiency we know about photosynthesis what is photosynthesis photosynthesis in the uh, the basic step the basic uh, concept about photosynthesis is that it takes sunlight uh, plants take sunlight and then synthesize glucose in the presence of sunlight uh, and uh, co2 is absorbing and then uh, we uh, plants uses this co2 and then they prepare their own food this means that they can absorb more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere convert it into organic molecules and store it as a biomass additionally some genetically modified plants have been designed to be more drought to tolerant reducing the need for irrigation which can be energy intensive and produce more carbon dioxide role of photosynthesis in plant growth and co2 reduction uh, in this we can see how by increasing photosynthesis capacity we know that photosynthesis is a process by which uh, plants absorb co2 as we know co2 is uh, increasing in our environment so we modify the plants so that it can modify the plants and also crops so that it can absorb more co2 from the environment and it is very environment friendly so we see now photosynthesis is a process used by the plants to convert energy from the sun into chemical energy stored in the plant biomass during photosynthesis plants absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and use it to create glucose molecules the glucose molecule is then used by the plant to produce other molecules and grow as part of this process the carbon dioxide is removed from the atmosphere and stored in the plant biomass reducing the amount of co2 in the air how genetically modified plants can be engineered to improve photosynthesis and increase co2 uptake up till now we see how uh, up till now we see that uh, photosynthesis by increasing photosynthesis efficiency 
we can reduce CO2 concentration from the environment. Now we see how genetically modified plants can be engineered to improve photosynthesis. So we see next, genetically modified plants can be engineered to have increased photosynthesis efficiency, allowing them to absorb more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. This can be done by introducing genes that encode for proteins involved in photosynthesis such as Rubisco. Rubisco is an enzyme which is responsible for the conversion of carbon dioxide into the organic molecules. Additionally, some plants have been genetically modified to produce more chlorophyll, increasing their plant capacity to absorb light and thus absorbing and thus increasing photosynthesis efficiency. Other modification can increase the plant's ability to tolerate drought or other environment stresses, allowing the plants to grow more efficiently and reducing the need for energy-intensive irrigation. So all of these modifications can result in a higher level of CO2 uptake and storage in the plant biomass, reducing the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. Up till now, we see how uh, the process uh, by the process uh, which follows genetically modified plants to reduce CO2 from the environment and increasing and how they increase photosynthesis efficiency. Now we see which are the plants which are the plants and which can be genetically modified so that it can reduce CO2 emission. And the first example is C4 rice. C4 rice is a type of genetically modified plant that is, that is engineered to incorporate the C4 photosynthetic pathway which is allow which allow it to absorb more carbon dioxide and use less water than traditional varieties of rice this is a special type of rice uh, than traditional type varieties of rice which absorb more photosynthesis than the traditional varieties of rices how uh, now we see how seafood is reducing co2 uh, so the process is this instead of using rubisco enzyme we already discussed about rubisco enzymes which is to capture atmospheric co2 we use in these plant an enzyme that does not bind oxygen this enzyme fixes co2 in a reaction that transfer a three carbon molecules into a four carbon molecule hence the name c4 photosynthesis the next example is salt tolerant tomato this type of genetically modified tomato tomato is designed to be resistant to salt and drought which can help reduce co2 emission from agricultural practices that requires a lot of water now we see how salt tolerant tomato reducing co2 from the atmosphere the process behind this is this plant adaptation to salinity out of three distinct types osmotic stress tolerance in which uh, sodium and chlorine exclusion is involved and then the tolerance of tissue to accumulate and a positive and cl negative and the third one example is high yield soybean these plants are also genetically modified and they are designed to produce more yield per plant which is also helpful for food production and then which also reduces the need for farmers to use additional land to crop production and uh, and this is common sense that by by this carbon emission carbon dioxide emission is also reduces then fourth one example is enhanced photosynthesis Scientists have developed crops that have been engineered to increase the photosynthesis rate which increases their ability to absorb more carbon dioxide and also reducing CO2 emission. How does photosynthesis reduce carbon dioxide? During photosynthesis, plants take in carbon dioxide and water from the air and soil. Within the plant cell, the carb water is oxidized, meaning it lo loses electrons, while the carbon dioxide, on the other hand, is reduced, meaning it gains electron. This transfers transforms the water into oxygen and the carbon dioxide into glucose and how this by enhancing photosynthesis carbon dioxide is reducing and the other uh, plants we discuss <clears throat> uh, first of them is corn these crops, these are basically crops that have been developed to improve CO2 uptake and reduce emissions. First of them is corn. Genetically modified corn has been developed to increase the crop photosynthesis efficiency, allowing it to absorb more carbon dioxide and reduce emission. This, this modified corn has also been engineered to produce more grains per year. Uh, y -E -R -R, y -E -A -R -E -R, which means that it can produce more food with less land and fewer resources. This allow farmer to increase their yields by reducing their environmental impact.
now we see how corn is reducing the process behind this is the management practices outlined is as yet unpublished study are surprisingly straightforward here farmers supplied manure from their cattle operations and some use gps system to maximize efficiency they enter suppress their corn with cover crops plants that infuse nitrogen into the soil which lowers the need for synthetic for synthetic fertilizer this significantly reduces soil disturbance with less tilling the practice of digging up the ground to plant seed to plant seeds and remove weeds and the next is high yield next is soybean Genetically modified soybean have been developed to increase the crop ability to absorb more carbon dioxide uh, as corn we already discussed the modified soybean also produce higher yield which is also again helpful for uh, yield production meaning that the farmer can produce more feed with fewer resources additionally the gen- modified soybeans are more resistant to pest and disease reducing the need for chemical pesticide and fertilizer this is also very beneficial this helps this also help to reduce emission from their products nutrients so uh, now we see how soybeans uh, uh is reducing nutrients fixed in plant residues remaining in cultivation areas help reduce carbon emission of about 175 to to 23.8 kg ca per ha from decreasing amount chemical fertilizing to be applied from the selected scenarios potential reductions of carbon emission from soybean oil oil production were found to be 87% as compared to existing conditions now we see about eucalyptus trees eucalyptus trees are the trees that have been genetically that also have genetically modified to sequester more carbon dioxide sequestering is the process by which uh, 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 carbon sequestering we also did, are already discussed that carbon sequestering is a process by which uh, we can increase uh, sequestering is basically the holding holding so carbon more carbon sequestering means more holding of carbon dioxide so it is sequestering more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere the modified trees have a higher rate of photosynthesis meaning that they can absorb more carbon dioxide than their unmodified counterparts then the law, uh, fourth one trees are poplar trees these trees are also genetically modified and they have genes from a wild relative of the poplar trees inserted into them to make them more efficient at photosynthesis and also we know by increasing efficiency of photo, uh, photosynthesis efficiency we also reduce co2 from the atmosphere because they absorbing more co2 from the environment allowing them to absorb more carbon dioxide this reduces the amount of co2 in the atmosphere and they absorb more co2 by absorbing more nutrients so next we see genetically modified trees that have been developed for carbon sequestration <clears throat> the next one is pine trees pine trees have been genetically modified to make more resistant to drought allowing them to sequester more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere additionally the modified trees have been engineered to grow faster meaning that they can absorb more carbon dioxide in a shorter amount of time new research has suggested that the chemical processes that turns peppers into the pine trees into the aerosols has been discovered an international team of scientists found that ultra low volatility of organic vapors found within the air served to be condensed onto any particle of surface that they come into contact with potential of genetically modified plants for carbon sequestration now we discuss about this genetically modified plants have the potential to improve carbon sequestration or the process of capturing and storing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere genetically modified plants have been engineered to have higher rate of photosynthesis which increases the amount of carbon dioxide taken from the atmosphere and stored as biomass in the plant in addition gm plants have been designed with enhanced root system which can increase soil carbon storage also genetically modified plants may also be able to sequester more carbon because of their increased resistance to environmental stresses such as drought and flooding etc the next is higher temperature this allows them to remain in an actively photosynthesis stage for longer period of time finally gm plants can be modified to produce oils and waxes that more effectively bind soil particles which can prevent carbon dioxide from being released back into the atmosphere 
so overall we see harnessing the potential of genetically modified plants could significantly improve carbon sequestration and it also help is reducing global warming we know global warming is very dangerous for our environment however further research is needed to understand the full potential of genetically modified plants and to ensure their safe and effective implementation now the next is we next we see how genetically modified plants is contributing in climate change mitigation genetically modified plants have the potential to contribute to climate change uh, mitigation through carbon sequestration we already discussed in the detail about this that carb by increasing carbon sequestration we are removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and by removing carbon dioxide atmosphere carbon dioxide concentration is decreasing in the atmosphere so in this way our environment is becoming friendly so next if we see carbon sequestration is a process of capturing and storing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere in order to reduce its concentration in the atmosphere and slow the rate of global warming we already discussed genetically modified plants have been engineered to increase rate of photosynthesis enhance root system increase resistance to environmental stresses and increase production of oils and waxes that bind soil that bind soil particles this allows gm plants to take in more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and store it as biomass in the plant I prevent it from released back into the atmosphere this could significantly reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and the other other hand it is uh, helpful in slowing the rate of global warming and further however further process is needed to understand the full potential are genetically modified plants for carbon sequestrations to ensure their safe and effective implementation now we see how genetically modified plants is a helpful in carbon sequestration in forests genetically modified plants have a greater role in the carbon sequestration in forest it is playing a significant role uh, by increasing the potential to play a role in carbon sequestration there are several ways we can contribute to carbon sequestration in forest uh, first one is increased biomass production then increased root growth then improved nutrient cycling and improved drought resistant so genetically modified plants can also be modified to enhance and photosynthesis process which can result in increased carbon dioxide uptake and thus more carbon sequestration <clears throat> it is these plants are also modified to increase the amount of lignin in their cell resulting in stronger and more durable wood which can help to store more carbon in the soil below finally gm plants can be modified to produce more efficient enzyme which can help to break down organic matter and release more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere with these and other approaches gm plants have play a significant role in carbon sequestration in forests now we see how it has play a role in car urban environments the potential of genetically modified plants for carbon sequestration in urban environment is significant now we see how as urban areas often produce large amount of carbon emissions uh, we all know about it genetically modified plants have the potential to contract contract pollution by taking up additional carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and converting it into organic matter this process known as phytoremediation can be used to sequester carbon in urban environment improving air quality and reducing the impact of greenhouse gases additionally gm plants can be used to create urban green spaces which are known to have positive impact on mental and physical health as well as providing habitat for wildlife <clears throat> genetically modified plants can also be used to create more efficient energy sources such as biofuels reducing the need for fossil fuels finally genetically modified plants can be used to produce materials for use in construction and other industries providing a sustainable alternative to traditional materials now we see the examples of research studies that have demonstrated the potential of genetically modified plants for carbon sequestration <clears throat> the first example is uh, uh, the first example is by study published in carbon Bi Bio plant biotechnology journal, journal found that gm maize plants had a higher root biomass which led to the increased carbon sequestration rate additionally a study published in nature natural plants found that gm cotton plants had an increased rate of photosynthesis and a higher biomass which translated a better carbon sequestration and finally a study published in the journal 
uh, global change biology found that gm wheat plants had an increased rate of photosynthesis, photosynthesis and a higher carbon sequestration rate than non gm wheat plants so we have we can difference the genetically modified plants and the plants which are not genetically modified these studies demonstrate the potential of gm plants for carbon sequestration now we see the economic benefits of genetically modified plants genetically modified plants can offer a range of economic benefits including improve by including improved yields reducing pesticide use and improved shelf life genetically modified plants can also offer farmers higher profits and also improve market access it can significantly boost yield by increasing the resistance to pest and disease and also allowing farmers to use fewer pesticides and fungicides saving money and it is also providing a higher yield it is also less vulnerable environmental conditions such as drought reducing the risk of crop failure which is a major problem in this race <clears throat> next is gm plants are also more tolerant of environment changes reducing the need for costly planting finally genetically modified crops can provide farmers with higher profits and improve market access genetically modified crops require fewer inputs and have a higher yield allowing farmers to sell their products at higher price so this is also very helpful for farmers and it is economic benefit next we see how challenges and concerns about genetically modified plants are facing first of them is environmental impact there is concern that gm plants could have an ad adverse effect on the environment for example by disrupting biodiversity and ecosystem or by creating super weeds that are resistant to herbicides then contamination there is a risk that gm plants could cross pollinate with non gm plants leading to unintended contamination of crops and the third one is human health there is a concern that genetically modified crops could have an adverse effect on human health for example by creating no allergen or toxin next is unintended consequences there is a risk that introduction of gm crops could have unintended consequences such as reducing the effectiveness of pest control methods or leading to the emergence of new pests then lack of regulation there is a concern that this is very uh, important step there is concern that the regulatory system currently in place are in adequate to ensure the safe use of genetically modified crops no we see what are the regulatory framework for genetically modified plants the regulatory framework for genetically modified plants is complex and varies from country to country this is uh, important point in the united states the regulation of genetically modified plant is handled by the united states department of agriculture which is also called usda the us environmental protection agency which is epa and the food and direct administration which is fda the usda is responsible for regulating the testing production and release of gm plants this includes ensuring that the gm plants are safe for the environment do not pose a risk to other organisms and can be safely used for the food and feed the epa is responsible for regulating the safety of gm plants intended for release into the environment their regulation involves assessing the potential impact of gm plants on human health as well as as well as any potential risks to the environment the fda is responsible for regulating the safety of gm plants intended for use in food and feed in europe the regulation for gm plants are handled by the european food safety authority efsa the european commission and the european environmental agency eea the efsa is responsible for assessing the safety of gm plants intended for release into the environment and for use in food and feed the european commission is responsible for the legislation while the eea is responsible for the monitoring and evaluating evaluating the safety of gm plants into the environment in many countries regulatory framework for gm plants are also in place at a regional and local level for example in the united states some states have enacted enacted laws that are stricter than the federal regulation similarly in europe some countries have enacted laws that are stricter than the european regulations and now we see the conclusion of genetically modified plants up to uh, up to now 
what we discuss about these plants now we concluded it <clears throat> so first is we see already how gm crops can help fight climate change in two ways we close uh, we close all this discussion in two steps by reducing the amount of co2 released in the atmosphere through the use of carbon sequestration crops by helping to reduce the need for the use of uh, chemical herbicides and pesticides which can have an adverse effect on the environment genetically modified crops have been engineered to survive in harsher drier environment making them more resilient in the face of changing temperature and weather patterns genetically modified crops have been developed to increase yields reducing the need for land clearing and require fewer inputs such as water and fertilizer these benefits have the potential to reduce emission and increased food security overall genetically modified crops of offer potential solutions to the challenges posed by the chemical change with benefit to both human health and environment Thank you so much. If you have any question, you can discuss.